Hey, you two, I need you guys to take this block of aluminium and turn it into an intake manifold for a Lamborghini. You good? Good? Alright, alright, so hello everyone. Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about machinists and designers within the engineering world and how these two can really piss each other off sometimes. So I talked to both machinists and designers who were on their way to retirement who figured out how to work cooperatively over their long careers. So they wanted me to make this video for the next generation so these two don't repeat the same mistakes. But first, let me tell you who these two people's professions are. Machining, in this sense, refers to taking a raw piece of material and cutting it into a desired shape by removing the material in a controlled process. Subtractive manufacturing. 3D printing is additive manufacturing. So imagine starting off with this block of aluminium, putting it into this cool high tech box with spinning saw blades and drill bits and bam you have your part and these metal filings get recycled this process is called computer numerically controlled or cnc milling so if you've ever driven past like an industrial area or some warehouse or some shit and they got this big old sign that says cnc machining on it that's what they're doing inside so these guys do the dirty work you have a cube of whatever you got to turn it into whatever these are the motherfuckers you turn to but in order to do that you need a 3d model from a design engineer first i'm, I'm gonna call him designers now he's got a program called blah, 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 blah. It's, it's one of these so the designer knows what the part is for where it goes what material it is what stresses will be applied to it, stress simulation, and a lot of number work. Look at those numbers. So these two here, dangerous combo. Check it out. The team of engineers needs something. Bicycle frame, rocket engine, intake manifold, you name it. The designer produces a 3D model. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs down, revision. Thumbs up, thumbs down, revision. Then everyone approves of it, and the designer prints out a technical drawing, and the machinist gets to work. Their design, so pristinely drawn out. We need exact measures here. We need this surface to be so finely finished that it is reflective and is within microns of tolerance. This curve, this material. Ooh, this hole right here? We have a list of drilled bits with specific sizes, but none of these will do. We need to order a very special one. We need to order a very special tapper to thread this special screw. This is some precise shit. It's so precise that bacteria living on it were like, this is some precise shit. They package it with a legendary tier of bubble wrap. They would have to make it again if it were even scratched. They hand it off to the assemblers and the designers. 300 hours and 5 reattempts. Alright, cool man. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, man, put a sticker on it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, boss, get the get the fucking angle grinder. Yeah, yeah, dude. I got it. Yeah. Let's go, baby. All right, it's ready. Do it. Do it. Do it. Nice. It's part of our cup holder, man. What? What? Never mind. This one problem. It's like accidentally telling someone to buy a Lamborghini. They'll either do it and not ask questions, or they will be like, you really want a Lamborghini? The designer is like, what? No, we just wanted a Honda Civic. Then it's back to the drawing board. So this is just one of the budget issues that they face. So if you take these problems and multiply it to every part in the assembly, then every contractor is just flushing money down the drain. Expanding these problems to every subcontractor that's doing the exact same shit. Just, dude, just stop, stop it. it. Get some help. So these old motherfuckers have already been through this shit. They know how to stop this madness, but the baby boomers are retiring soon, so that's where this video comes in. So they gave me a bullet list. Maximize tolerances where applicable. Do not use default tolerance. Okay, so I'm vibing this one. If a surface on a part needs to be precisely cut, then they can cut it precisely. But if the part doesn't need to be the bleeding edge of accuracy, then give that surface a little bit more wiggle room. He can cut it, but tighter tolerances forces him to do more work in order to make sure it's precise. Bullet point number two, standard metric or standard imperial chart should be used. So when I was interviewing the machinist, he said refer to the chart over and over, and I was like, I don't know what that means. So I need to pull up the chart, a list of every drill bit and every other bit that every machine shop should have by default. So if a designer calls out for a threaded hole, and has this chart hanging on his wall, you're darn right the machinist is going to have this bit on the list. Happy machinist. But if a designer calls out for a non-standard hole that isn't on the chart, then the machinist has to order a new bit, a new tap and die, sometimes the shit has to be mailed. And oh my god, that costs time and money. More than likely, it'll never be used ever again. And bullet point number three, be more realistic about some designs. So this one I thought it was kind of funny. They were in the middle of a lunch when I asked them for clarification on this bullet point, and my man holds up an aluminum tray with some chicken in it and says, sometimes I get parts with like 0.3 millimeters of thickness, almost as thin as a sheet of paper. So here you are trying to machine out a part with the structural strength of a crunchy autumn leaf. Meanwhile, the designer is like, yep, this leaf mathematically makes sense. And the machinist is beating his shit because this is the third time it's ripped apart due to like overheating or something. Bullet point number four, use standard radius where applicable. So this one comes back to the whole chart thing. The engineer designs some shit, engineer lists some arbitrary number, machinist has to order some new tooling, waits a week, throws it away, you know the drill. Hey, hey, hey. So, so let's say you cut some metal. That nanodegree angle right there, it could actually hurt someone. So in order to make it ever so slightly smooth, guess what? They have a bit for that too and it's shaped like a turtle's dick. Huh? <laughs> Bullet point number four. If this part isn't going to be on a spacecraft or aircraft, then be a bit more willing to compromise on precision. This is aerospace. Okay, jet engine. Precision needed. Gyroscope mount. Precision needed. Engine block. Precision needed. A machinist will machine anything as precisely as you need it to be, but that cup holder, give that guy more tolerance. The surface can be here, it can be here, it, it doesn't matter. We're gonna angle grind it, bro. Just give it enough tolerance to be screwed in, and that's it. Last bullet point number five. Have a machinist or former machinist around the office if you can, so this one can reduce the operating cost. Let's say the engineer prints out a drawing and then sends it to the shop, and the shop is like, yo, we can't make this 
space, bro. The drill has to go here, then it has to go here, then it has to go here, and then it has to make another turn. We, we can't do it. We can't do it. You're both now losing money. He has to spend time redesigning it, and some poor machine shop out there is probably fucking trying it anyway for the money. It fails, it's scrapped, shit sucks. Solution? Hire him. Imposter among us. Remember that team that was there giving the thumbs up and the thumbs down? This is the ideal team composition. Don't skimp on hiring fabricators because they're dirty or they swear or they're soaked in coolant. He'll save you money. He'll catch it primarily and be like, yo, you, you can't machine that. I, I tried it once, I lost my hand. It was great. Uh, try designing it like this and we won't reject it. Hey, so this design has a long, slim protrusion. I'm assuming it's a wired. Guy. That means I gotta buy a large block and then spend days machining it down. Uh, how about you just design the block, I can drill and ream a hole, and then it's cheaper and that part is replaceable if it breaks. Oh, th this is a cup holder, right? Well, does it need a mirror-like finish? No? Well, then give it a 63 finish. It should be fine, right? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Alright, bust and print that bitch. Alright, cup holder ready. Let's give it a go, guys. Yeah! Thank you for the donations, everyone. I stole everything from this Wikipedia article. Bye!